Yeah, let's get more though on what we're watching in, in some specific spaces at the moment. Um, life sciences is a key space, but let's bring in Michael Frazas joining us now for Frazas Capital Partners in our studio. Michael, before we get into some of the uh, stocks you're watching, I guess more broadly, give us a view on how you're, you're seeing markets at the moment. We've got quarterlies are going on in the US. We've got earnings season kicking up here at home. How significant is this in, in a time when we're sort of digesting how COVID's hit companies? Absolutely. I mean, this is the first quarter where you've got the full COVID impact. Yeah. Um, got a pretty good guide on, you know, who's performing well and who isn't. You know, it's not like this is the first data point we're going to get. You know, and in technology, you can often see how, you know, web, websites are performing. Um, there's a lot of guides to how things are going. And in many ways, you know, the NASDAQ uh, in the US is off its highs. Um, it rally last night. It's, off, it's down about 5%. Um, so in many ways, that's a positive setup. You know, you must prefer things to be a bit off the tops rather than going into earnings where everything's, you know, sky high. Um, so it should be interesting. Very interesting to watch. I guess it's all in context though, 5% off its highs on the back of what has been almost a 50% rally from the lows. And we've got 36% of the index reporting in just one night later this week. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. I mean, the winners will keep winning. That's my view. Okay. Um, let's move on from that and talk some of the stocks you're watching more broadly. Because I know um, you're looking at a diagnostics company, Twist. Uh, yes. So what Twist does is they've got the cheapest and best way of making synthetic DNA. Um, what that's interesting is firstly, you know, synthetic biology, genetic engineering, that needs highly precise and cheap DNA, so they can do that. But it's also very relevant for testing. Um, so an example of why that's relevant is, you know, this idea of having blood tests for cancer. So we've known since the 1940s that um, the tumours shed DNA, it's called circulating tumour DNA. The problem was is there was no way to find it. So if you took a blood sample from somebody, most of the DNA is there is going to be healthy. You know, how are you going to find that, that one bit of their DNA mm -hmm. that has the genetic, you know, imprint of that signifies cancer. To find that, you actually need to sequence all the DNA effectively or highly enrich the DNA to do it. And Twist synthetic DNA allows you to do that. Um, and think of how long it took them to sequence a human genome um, over you know, a decade plus. Now imagine having to do that again and again and again in just one single sample. Um, but the technology is finally there. Um, and Twist Bioscience is one of the leading, um, kind of like a foundational technology uh, behind these, these is crazy. Are they speculative sort of investments, do you think, some of these businesses? Um, I mean, they're, when we bought it, it was growing at 100% plus. You know, they, it's, they're really very high-tech businesses, yeah. right? There's a lot of IP behind them. You have to understand them, though, very, very... You do have to understand them, yeah. yeah. But you, it's all, you just bring it back down to first principles. So the way you used to do DNA is you'd have, like, say, a series of test tubes and you build it up base pair by base pair. Mm. Now, Twist basically combined two technologies that are very, very advanced. The first one is silicon manufacturing. So they shrunk the test tubes down and printed, carved them into little into silicon at the micro scale. Um, the second thing they did is they got inkjet printers. Now you think of inkjet printing, you think it's kind of a um, you know an old technology that doesn't really work. But the reality is it's very good. Like you can print stuff um, so fine you can barely see the lines. Yeah. Um, instead of printer ink, they put the reagents to make the base pairs into it. So in combining those two technologies, the silicon manufacturing and the inkjet printing, squirting chemicals instead of ink, meant that they could shrink the whole thing down. You know, fit effectively a million of these little test tubes on, you know, something the size of an iPhone. So if you say, is it, is it speculative? I mean, this is foundational technology, very hard to, um, very hard to kind of uh, recreate that. Uh, and also, you know, when we bought it, revenue was growing over 100%. It's relatively high margin. Margins are increasing. Um, so I don't think it's uh, completely speculative. And if anything, this is what the kind of company that should be supported by the market. Well, let's take first principles again. And another company you're watching, Garden Health, which is doing blood tests for cancer. Is it as simple as just reaching out, acquiring uh, customers, being able to get those samples? What's involved in a business model like this? Um, well, I think the most exciting businesses to invest in, I think, are ones that have staged process to development. Mm. So we are not yet at the stage where you can take a blood sample and then test for all kinds of cancers. It's just too difficult. You don't know what to look for. What we can do is, is if you have a specific cancer, is we can take a blood sample, test it, find the genetic signatures, and then decide which treatment to do. Mm. So it's treatment selection. This is already in play. They're already growing at 100% plus. This is like a, a very viable business. The next step is recurrence monitoring. Um, and there's tests there. This is where they're doing their trials now. So recurrence monitoring, you know the cancer. You know there's a good chance it's coming mm. back. It's, you know what to look for. It's an easier step. Um, but you should be able to see it in the blood long before there's any symptoms. Mm. Um, so it'd be very valuable if, if, you know, if they can pull that one off. Yeah, the third step is the general screening. Are there many competitors in that field? There's a few, yeah. There's um, Bill Gates' back one called Grail. Yeah. Um, there's a number of, this has been like, you know, one of the goals of, of that entire field of science. Deep. So there's a lot of people um, doing it. But this is like a listed play 
that already has revenue stream. Um, and in many ways, these, will, these companies will go for different, different, different cancers. It'll be a long time before somebody has a panel that can effectively go for all of them at once. Yeah. Uh, but it's interesting. I mean, these, think about how exciting these companies are, how advanced the technology is, you know, how fast they're growing. Can I just ask you, though, as a retail investor, mm. how much do you have to understand the ins and outs of these businesses? Because I feel like with biotechs, you really need to understand, um, I guess, the science behind it to, to be able to invest appropriately. Do you see it that way? Or do you think retail investors can have a punt? I mean, how yeah, does I it... Think, I think these companies, where they have revenue and there's a product, um, there's margins, I think that's a very different story to, say, a biotech. Yeah. Generally, I try and advise people not to do biotech because yeah. there's so many pitfalls. There's so many things that can go wrong. Right. And we got one wrong last year, which was they're trying to do a brain test for cancer. Um, you know, very good, you know, phase early results where they seemed to cure a number of people. Um, but six months before the trial end, they came out with, with an announcement saying that the trial was going to continue with no changes. Mm. And the stock dropped 40%. But in reality, that effectively meant the trial had failed. So all the smart investors sold. Mm. Um, and then I guess there must have been some retail people left who didn't understand the significance of that. Um, and sure enough, six months later, the trial failed. Yep. Um, so typically, what must have happened? It's very, it's very, you never really know what's going on. They must have picked, you know, the most promising patients at the start, either consciously or subconsciously. Um, in that case, their early data was, was not quite correct. Yep. So there's many pitfalls. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Mm. You always bring us such amazing investable <laughs> trends here, though, names that we haven't had before on the program, and we look mm. forward to more of them when we hear from you soon, Mike. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. Really appreciate it.